In this lesson, we wrap up our look at paracyclic reactions, focusing on sigmatropic rearrangements, including the Cope and Kleisen rearrangements. Unlike electrocyclizations and cycloadditions, sigmatropic rearrangements are paracyclic reactions that do not typically form a ring. A sigmatropic rearrangement is the migration of an atom or group across a pi system. In the reaction, a sigma bond is cleaved on one end of the pi system, and another is formed at the other end. Here we see two examples of sigmatropic rearrangement. In the first, a hydrogen atom migrates from one carbon to another carbon on the end of the pi system. One carbon-hydrogen sigma bond is cleaved, and another is formed in the product. Note that the mechanism includes both pi electrons and one pair of sigma electrons. In the second reaction, a three-carbon allyl group migrates from one carbon to another carbon on the end of the pi system. One carbon-carbon sigma bond is cleaved, and another is formed in the product. A bracketed notation is used to describe sigmatropic rearrangements based on the number of atoms involved. Determine the number of atoms between the sigma bond that's cleaved and the newly formed sigma bond, traversing in both directions. The two numbers are then listed in ascending order, separated by a comma. Let's take a look at two examples that demonstrate the process. In the first example, a hydrogen atom migrates across a carbon pi system. The transition state in the center shows the sigma bond being cleaved and the new sigma bond being formed as dashed lines. Starting from the old sigma bond and moving clockwise, we see only a single hydrogen atom before encountering the other, newly formed sigma bond. Starting again from the old sigma bond and moving counterclockwise, we now see five carbon atoms before encountering the other, newly formed sigma bond. The two paths contain one atom and five atoms, so the rearrangement is described as a 1,5 sigmatropic rearrangement. In the second example, a three-carbon allyl group migrates across a carbon pi system. The transition state in the center again shows the old sigma bond being cleaved and the new sigma bond being formed as dashed lines. Starting from the old sigma bond and moving clockwise, we see three carbon atoms before encountering the other, newly formed sigma bond. Starting again from the old sigma bond and moving counterclockwise, we also see three carbon atoms before encountering the other newly formed sigma bond. Each of the two paths contains three atoms, so the rearrangement is described as a 3-3 sigmatropic rearrangement. The sigmatropic rearrangements we'll be looking at occur within the HOMO of the pi system. Just like cycloadditions, sigmatropic rearrangements can occur with either suprafacial or anterofacial topology. In a suprafacial rearrangement, the atom or group migrates onto the same face of the pi system to which it was originally attached. Here we see a simple migration of a hydrogen atom in a symmetric molecular orbital. The s orbital of the hydrogen atom migrates from the bottom lobe on the left end to the bottom lobe on the right end of the molecular orbital. Because it migrates onto the same bottom face where it was originally attached, the reaction is suprafacial. In an anterofacial rearrangement, the atom or group migrates onto the opposite face of the pi system from which it was originally attached. Here we see a simple migration of a hydrogen atom in an asymmetric molecular orbital. The s orbital of the hydrogen atom now migrates from the bottom lobe on the left end to the top lobe on the right end of the molecular orbital. Because it migrates from the bottom onto the opposite top face, the reaction is anterofacial. While suprafacial rearrangement is possible for transition states of any ring size, anterofacial rearrangement is restricted to reactions with transition states that have relatively large rings, typically eight atoms or larger. For an anterofacial rearrangement, the ring in the transition state needs to be large and flexible enough to allow the group to migrate from one face of the pi system to the other. Let's take a look at two examples that demonstrate the analysis of sigmatropic rearrangements at the orbital level. In the first example, we see 1,3-pentadiene undergo a 1,5-sigmatropic rearrangement under thermal conditions. Under thermal conditions, the molecule is in the ground state. The mechanism involves movement of three pairs of electrons, two pi pairs, and one sigma pair. This means that psi1, psi2, and psi3 are filled, which makes psi3 the homo. Psi3 is an odd-numbered pi molecular orbital, which means it's symmetric. Here we see a simplified molecular orbital depiction of a symmetric HOMO attached to a hydrogen. We can see that the reaction will occur with suprafacial topology. This is easily achieved in a reaction with a six-atom cyclic transition state, so the reaction succeeds. In the second example, we see 1,3-pentadiene undergo a 1,5-sigmatropic rearrangement under photochemical conditions. Under photochemical conditions, the molecule will now be in its most stable excited state. 
In this case, an electron has been excited from psi 3 to psi 4. This makes psi 4 the homo, and an even numbered pi molecular orbital will be asymmetric. Here we see a simplified molecular orbital depiction of an asymmetric homo attached to a hydrogen. We can see that the reaction must now occur with an anterofacial topology. However, a six atom cyclic transition state is too constrained to accommodate an anterofacial topology, so the reaction fails. We'll wrap things up with a quick look at two particularly common and useful sigmatropic rearrangements. First up is the COPE rearrangement, which is a thermal 3 3 sigmatropic rearrangement of a 1 5 diene. The product of the reaction will also be a 1 5 diene. The simplest possible example of a COPE rearrangement is shown here. We see a rather pointless rearrangement of 1 5 hexadiene to give 1 5 hexadiene. In order to see an actual change, we need to decorate the reactant so that it will produce a distinctly different product. Here we see two examples that also demonstrate a simple analysis of reaction equilibria in COPE rearrangements. In the first example, the two alkenes in the reactant are both monosubstituted. In the product, one alkene is monosubstituted and the other is now disubstituted. Remember that alkenes are more stable when more highly substituted. In this case, the increased substitution on the lower alkene makes the product more stable and pushes equilibrium to the right. In the second example, we see that the reactant has a highly strained 3-atom ring. The angle strain is relieved in the product, which is now a rather stable 7-atom ring. In this case, the release of angle strain makes the product more stable and again pushes equilibrium to the right. The final sigmatropic rearrangement we'll explore is the Kleisen rearrangement, not to be confused with the Kleisen condensation. The Kleisen rearrangement is a thermal 3-3 sigmatropic rearrangement of an allyl vinyl ether. The product is an unsaturated carbonyl, which is usually favored over the ether at equilibrium. Here, we see a simple allyl vinyl ether undergo Kleisen rearrangement to give 4 pentene al.